Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm Living for 510, and this is the first episode of Fan Talk. And I am here with... It's Dawkins. Check me out. I got a YouTube channel. It's not up and running yet, but it will be pretty soon. Yes. Yes. Uh, do you want to give the people who are watching this or the subscribers a little quick intro of what exactly this show is? All right. Well, me, it's Dawkins, and your boy Living for 510. We are diehard sports fans. And we watch NFL Network, ESPN, NBA TV, and we have a bone to pick with these people's lists. So the best thing that we can do is come up with our own list and then have the fans critique other fans' lists. Because I'm a diehard fan, he's a diehard fan. So right now we're going to do top 10 big men in the NBA. And we're going to do 10 through 6 to save some time. Yes. So without further ado, it's Dawkins. Go ahead. Who's your number 10? All right. Number 10, Chris Bosh. Big talent. Oh, <laughs> Big time talent, but there's something wrong with his head. So he, he, he gets too intimidated. He's too soft. Y'all y'all, y'all seen the playoffs. Y'all seen the whole regular season. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Andrew Bynum. I say he's number 9. When healthy, he is a dominant big man. He's number 9 because he hasn't been healthy. All right. Number 8, Brooke Lopez. New Jersey Nets, a big man who can shoot, shoot the mid-range jumper, he can rebound with the best of them, and he's a beast in the low block. So he's number nine. Number seven, LaMarcus Aldridge of the Portland Trailblazers. He is one of the most underrated players in the whole NBA, the whole NBA. But he gets it done. He should be an all-star player back-to-back years because he is one of the most dominant big men in as far as the power forward and the big man is concerned. One other note, Take Timmy out. That's right, Tim Duncan. Take him out. Put LaMarcus Aldridge in for the All-Stars next year, baby. And number six, Mr. 30 and 30, Mr. 20 and 10, Mr. Double Double, Mr. 53 straight in a row, Kevin Love, the Double Double Machine. He's a beast on them boards at like only like 6'10", I think he is. And enough said, he's a beast going, going into the low block against bigger people and bringing down 30 rebounds and scoring 30 points. And he can shoot the three. Not said. He's he's my number six player. Big man. Okay. Okay. Um, so first off, there's two people on this list that really stick out to me that should not be where they are right now, and I want to encourage everyone to comment and let us know exactly what you think of his top five list. But before that, let me go bad on this stupid ass list here. First of all, <laughs> you put Chris Bosch in number ten, that's baloney and cheese. He should be at least in top five. This guy can score, he can play defense. His, his softness, I think, is a little bit underrated. That's debatable. I mean, this guy can be a star on a team, on any other team. Yes, yes, in Toronto. He had a chance to do that. He didn't do that. But I think that he's changed when he went to Miami. I mean, if I were to rank the stars in Miami right now, I'd put him above LeBron. And that's just my opinion. So I think that he should be higher up on that list. And the other one is Brooke Lopez. This guy is a star in the league. He is the... Number two center in the league. I mean, you can argue that he's number two behind Dwight Howard. This guy, like you said, he can beast with the best of them. Now, sometimes he, he doesn't decide to show up. I mean, there's been games when he's just faded in the background um, when he gone up against Dwight. But this guy can score. His, his floaters are unbelievable. The shots he can make, you're like, who is this? Looks like Kobe with a bald head in white. This is, I mean, the things that he do, you, people just go, wow. So... I have to disagree with you on that. Should he be in the top ten? Yes. Should he be number two? I think so. So, everyone else there I can agree on, but that's th- those two really stick out as total baloney and cheese. So, <laughs> so here's, here, here, here's, here's my list, okay? At number ten, I have JaVale McGee. Now, he is a dunker. Okay? Now people are like, oh, why right, he can dunk. Yeah, but this guy is like the star of his team. This guy is going to be a great big man going into years and years to come. He, comp- he, he, he his, his offensive game is getting better. His defensive game is getting better. And he's not that big, you know? So he's kind of like a, um, a Kevin Love without the, like, not yet. He's going to become a Kevin Love. He's just, yeah. And then at number nine, now this may shock a lot of people. I have Roy Hibbert at number nine. Uh, yes, Roy Hibbert of the Indiana Pacers. Now, I have him because, in my opinion, 
He's the top center on that team. He plays great defense. He grabs those boards. He, he can score. He averaged about 12, about a little, like 12 points a game. He's a big presence, and in my opinion, when they're gonna when 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 they're gonna rank big men, you need that big presence, and he creates that big presence. Thus, he's in my list. Now he's not higher on my list for the fact that he's not a star. Is he a good role player? Yes. So I put him at number nine. Number eight, Kevin Love. Enough said. Number seven, Blake Griffin. Now, people would say, Blake, Rookie of the Year, Beast, he's on, he's on all these highlights, he had this commercial where he's like kissing the girl through the phone, all that stuff, great. He's a great, great young, young big man in this league, he's going to surpass Dwight Howard if he hasn't already, he's LeBron, but even bigger, he, he needs to work on his shooting a little bit, but, that, but that'll come in time, he, I mean, basically, I mean, last year, like I said, was his rookie year, this year, I feel like he's going to take over that number one spot from Dwight Howard. Then, number six, Zach Randolph. I mean, just watch the playoffs. This dude led the Memphis Grizzlies almost to the NBA Finals. So, I mean, on his back alone he did this. His, he, he, and pl- I, he, he also played defense, which is something that people were like, oh, well, he can only score. No, he plays defense. He's a great rebounder. But, but he's not higher on my list. Just because there's other people on my list that I think are a little bit better than him. But he just edged out number five. But you got to away from number five. That's why I put him at number six. What all do you right, think, Dawkins? Well, well, all right. I will give you Zach Randolph off the way he did in the playoffs this year and the fact that he was an all-star last year. I'll give you, of course, Kevin Love because he's in my 10th through 6th. And... <sighs> I'll give you Blake Griffin off the of potential and the fact that he is a beast and the future star in the league. He's already basically a star, yep. but I'm talking about worldwide known star. Yeah. So, yeah, but your first two, how <laughs> could you say that McGee and Hibbert are better than Andrew Bynum? First of all, McGee, he is not 6'10". He's a 7-foot center, okay? He can dunk. And that's it. He's not the best player on his team. You have John Wall. You have Lewis. He used to play for uh, Orlando. Now he's on. Now he's on the Washington Wizards. Okay, Jarrell McGee. He is a one-trick pony. He is not a beast. Okay, I think he only got about. I think he he averaged about like close to ten points and close to ten rebounds. That's not beast mode in my eyes. Roy Hibbert. He is not even the best big man on his team. They have Tyler Hansbrough. I think I hope I said his name right. But yes, Psycho T from North Carolina. He's a better he's a better big man than Roy Hibbert. Roy Hibbert, he is the poster child, the seven foot man who is soft as hell. A lot of people what? say Yao Ming. Nah, Roy Hibbert. What has Roy Hibbert done since he's been in the league? He's been in the league since I think oh nine. So three years. Yes, yes. And what has yes, he, he done? Has, but, a whole bunch of okay. nothing whole bunch of nothing. They don't even throw him the ball deep in the post, and he's seven feet. He, You can't sit here and tell me that he is a dominant big man when it comes to playing defense. He's not. He's a big body taking up space. And if I want a big body, a big body taking up space, well, guess what? I'm taking Andrew Bonham over Roy Hibbert every day. No, no, no way. Okay, Andrew Bynum gets hurt like every five minutes. You know, he could get hurt taking a shit. Uh, Roy Hibbert, Roy Hibbert is this, I mean, he's, 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 he's been, con- yes, he's had some injury problems, okay? But uh, not even to the extent that Andrew Bynum has. And his, his offensive game is getting better. 12 points from a center, so, hey, right, that's so, just gravy on the cake, okay? So, and okay. then you add in his defense and you add in his rebounding. And, yes, you, you can call him soft and all that stuff. But hey, you know what? You gotta think about it. Okay, this guy's still young. He's he's, st- he's still growing into his his role on the team. And when I think of big men, I think of yes, they 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 they, they have to score. But the number one priority is locking down the paint and grabbing those boards, g- getting those blocks, shutting down the offense, the other person's offen- offensive center or 
just well, center in general. Well, and I think that Hibbert can do that. Well, and same with McGee. Well, McGee, hell no. Roy Hibbert, let, let's address him. Because you cannot sit here. Basically what you're saying is they're picking him over Bonham because he stays healthy. That's a bunch of BS. Because a 50% Andrew Bonham is way better than 100% Roy Hibbert. And the fact that you're saying that he's what? young. Andrew no Bonham. Way. Andrew Bonham. It's just because he's in L.A. That's the no, only reason. No, the only no, reason is because no, he's in not. L.A. And I'm he's not. on the Lakers. Yo. And his coach is Phil Jackson. Okay, look, and right. his, his, his best friend is is, is when you're done yelling, That's the I'll only continue. reason. When you're done yelling, okay, now, I'll ahead. continue. Because okay, I'm not ESPN. I don't give a damn where he plays. The fact is, you can't sit here and tell me that you're going to take Roy Hibbert over Andrew Bynum when he only has 20 points. What, what did Roy Hibbert do against Dwight Howard? whole bunch of nothing. Okay? You, the only argument that you had was that he's young and that he stays healthy. Because all the other facts you throw out was just your opinion. And I respect your opinion. But let's talk about the facts. Andrew Bynum and Roy Hibbert are basically the same age. Basically the same age. And the fact that Bonham ha is injury prone last time I checked, he didn't get injured this year. Everybody was crying for the Lakers to, oh, trade Bonham to, to get Carmelo Anthony. He said Bonham didn't get hurt. Bonham didn't get hurt. We talked about going into next year. We're not giving him last time achievement awards. Bonham is better than Roy <laughs> Hibbert. <laughs> all right. All right. Look. Bullshit. Okay, I'm just going to say that. Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> but, hey, uh, let us know in the comments what you think about our lists. And our lists are posted right here. Bam. There's uh, It's Dawkins list. And bam. There's my list. So you guys can pause it. You guys can look at those. Um, definitely write in the comments. Let us know what your top, uh, bottom five, uh, top top NBA players going in the next season are. Um, top big man, top big obviously, man. Obviously, top big man. Thank you. Thank you, it's Dawkins, top big man. So, again, I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone for commenting, letting us know exactly what you guys think about the show. Like I said, this is the first of many episodes. We'll be back here Sunday. It's Dawkins, man. Do you have something to leave them on? Oh, yes. My channel I, it is up there, but it's, there's nothing really on it. I have my favorites and anything like that. I I'm, want I'm to drop, because I'm just like living, I want to put gameplay videos on, and I want to drop my my channel when Madden comes out. So just look out for that August 30th. I'm going to be on. Yep. Uh, if any, like, And if someone really, really feels strongly about their opinions and thinks that we're just completely full of BS, send us a personal message on Xbox, and we'll gladly bitch you out. So until then, <laughs> hey. this is Livin' signing off. Deuces.